Hi guys, Lisa Tarbany here and I'm here with my wingman Neil Wagstaff and today we're going to be talking a wellness check and how to increase and boost your immunity. So if you're listening via my podcast, Pushing the Limits, welcome. And if you're on video or you're on Facebook listening to this, welcome again to the show. Um, Neil, how are you doing over in Havelock, mate? It's weird times, isn't it? It's been a strange week, mate. It's been a strange week. I personally, I feel like I've been part of a science fiction movie. Yep. Um, very yeah, bizarre. It's a weird, weird world at the moment. It's a weird week. Um, but what has worked for me this week, I'm not going to lie, there's been some anxious moments. There's been some stressful moments. But what works for me again and again is just coming back to the, the easy wins and low-hanging fruit, the bits I can control. And if I'm focusing on the bits I can control, I'm feeling a, I'm feeling a whole lot better. Absolutely. And this is what we want to do with you guys. We're going to start putting out a whole lot more content online um, to help you cope with the stress and being stuck at home and what you can do to, to optimize um, your health over this coronavirus time that we're all going through as a, as a you know, the whole humanity, basically, um, and to keep yourself well. So, Neil, um, yeah, I'll give you a quick introduction. My name is Lisa Tamati. I'm an ultra endurance athlete for 25 years, um, now retired. And Neil was my coach for over a decade and saved my career. And we've uh, since gone into business and we have a, a company called Running Hot Coaching together that um, helps train people and athletes, both as health coaches and as running coaches. Uh, and epigenetics coaches. Um, we train over 700 people odd around the world. So we um, love what we do. We're very passionate about sharing our knowledge and uh, we're going to share a little bit today with you. Where do you want to start, Neil? Let's start with our, our wellness check, mate. So this is something that we use with our members at the gym at Peak Fitness and Health. We also use it with um, our athletes through Running Hot as well. And I was thinking of how we could we could share some some stuff that'd be useful to to people at this time yeah. and i kept coming back to this lee so i just kept coming back again and again it's simple it's straightforward and a lot of people look at these things and think they're too simple but if we can get a control of these things through these tough times then it's going to make a real difference to our um to our bodies our health most importantly our mental health and wellness as well yep. so looking at what we want you guys and girls to do at home is write these things down and we can send you a copy as well if you want, so just let us know afterwards. We're going to rate ourselves on a scale of one to 10. You can do this each day, but I suggest you do check in on a regular basis because it's going to be easy at the moment for these things to get carried away. So we're going to rate ourselves on a scale of one to 10. One being that we're, we're feeling like we're in the toilet and nothing's going well. 10 being rock and roll, we're ready to party, we are all guns blazing. Now for all of us, we want to be all guns blazing, okay? What we're going to want to do is that's going to vary throughout the day so, and throughout the week as well. So if we can see where we're at, then it makes it easy for us to identify which areas we can work on. Some weeks we might be low in just a couple of things, some weeks just one, some weeks we might be low in more things. But what it allows us then to do is take control, make decisions on where we're at with our own personal health and wellness. And more importantly, if we get these things up and get our scores up, guess what's going to climb as well, which is so, so important at the moment, is our immunity. Mm. If we can get the uh, our immunity out there, it's so important for us as well, but also our loved ones around us, um, and especially our parents and grandparents as well. Yes, very much so with our elderly. So we, we want you to scale one to 10 for each of these, sleep, nutrition, hydration, movement, energy, body, and stress, and give yourself a rating of one to 10. And if you're coming out with some pretty low scores, you've got lot ones and twos and threes and fours, then uh, you need to sort of understand your body is not in a good place and you need to be adding in some more attention to the areas that you've got deficit on. Now we use this with our athletes when they're judging how hard they should be training because if they've got poor sleep, poor nutrition and they were really dehydrated yesterday and maybe they had five beers, then we're probably not gonna go and put them into the really hardest training session of the week. And the reason is because we're not gonna get the effect that we're after and we're actually gonna cause the body more stress. So this is a tool that we use with our athletes, but this works also with just general people going through the population and just knowing where you are on all of these levels so that you don't end up, you know, with too much stress and putting your body under too much load at a time when we're all naturally going to be a lot under a lot of stress so that's the wellness check we can send that out to anybody who wants to reach out to us we'll send you a little spreadsheet with us on um yeah so make sure you take you know take note of this and actually use it so where um from there what we're going to do guys is just take you through some of our really easy wins our low-hanging fruit for each of these so you've got some takeaways to actually work with and do so looking at sleep sleep is essential as we all know for 
optimal recovery of the body and the mind. So it's not just the body, it's going to be the mind as well. If we sacrifice sleep, we are going to be putting ourselves at, at higher risk and we begin putting those around us and looking at how we organize our jobs, our day, routine and structure are going to be key moving forward. We think a lot more clearly when we're well rested. So some easy tips with sleep. Busy you are, the more stressed you are, the more stressed you feel, the more important the need is to rest and recover. So our message to our athletes and our message to those that are training hard in the gym is if you are working hard, then rest hard. Okay, really important. You're going to work hard, rest hard. Even more important now. So if we are going hard, putting more time and effort into things, make sure we allow time for the rest. Now we're going to split rest down into three different things. Our total rest, reduced workloads, and then me time. Important that we've got all three of those types of rest in our lives. Two hours before midnight is worth four hours of sleep after midnight to your adrenals. So if we're under stress load, then get to bed early. So 10 o'clock should be the cutoff, real simply speaking. That can vary from person to person, but simple low-hanging fruit is think about winding down 9 o'clock and then being out, lights out by, by 10 o'clock. Make a big difference to how your body's responding. Our body will follow the natural rhythm to light. So slow down, relax as the sun sets, and, away, and get up um, and ready for the day as the sun rises. We are very much yeah. circadian beasts, aren't we, Neil? We need, we so need much so. to follow the natural rhythms and with our you know, artificial light. One of the tricks that I've got for you there is um, the blue blocking glasses. I use those mm -hmm. at night time if I'm watching telly, if I have to be on the computer or anything like that. I've got my blue blocking glasses so that I don't affect the melatonin that is being produced, and which is in inhibited when I've got the blue light exposure um, at night time. And that can stop me going to sleep. So that's a really good quick and simple tip they're easy to get online for 20 odd bucks or so so grab those blue blocking glasses and dim your lights and try to follow the natural rhythm of the world because that's what our body developed from and your adrenals are just so important right now and your stress levels and your hormones and getting that sleep is when your hormones are you know doing their thing it's when your adrenals are doing their thing so if you're if you're you're burning the midnight oil and you know a lot of us are going to have to be because we're we're um you know, stressed out with work, we're losing our jobs and that, but just don't underestimate the power of sleep. It's very, very important. So physical repair generally happens between 10 a.m. Um, or sorry, 10 p.m. that should be and, and 2 a.m. Psychological yeah, okay. repairs will happen between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. So simply speaking, if you've got a high physical stress load, 10 p.m. to bed at the latest. That's when you're going your body's going to recover. If you've got high psychological stress, then stay in bed a little bit longer in the morning. If you can't do it every day, pick some days where you can. Again, low hanging fruit. If it doesn't work every day, pick some days where you can so you can let your, both your body and your mind recover. Again, simple things. Look at that. It's you know, based on, on good science and good fact. And you all know um, that when you've had a good night's sleep, how much better you feel. Don't let it accumulate. So don't let the low sleep, if you've been nailing happily eight hours sleep and you've started letting it drop to six and a half or seven, just don't let it accumulate. You can control it. Take this as one of the things you can control in your life and put it to the, to the top of the priority list. Now, reduce workload. Allow your, your body to take some rest. Empty your bucket. We'll move on and talk about that later on, the stress bucket in a little bit more detail. But it, allow yourself some, some options to reduce and have a lower workload. Okay? Yep. Yep. So what we mean by that is... Sorry, guys. Can you still see Sorry. that? What we mean by that is schedule a light, a light week of exercise. If you're training hard every three to four weeks, you should have a lighter week of exercise as well. Okay, so it's period, basic periodization, but more important now that you do allow yourself some weeks to just have an off week. Have a week where you reduce intensity, reduce load, and that applies not just to exercise, to the other bits in your life as well. Okay. Yeah, it's all about the rhythms again. And of course, we could break this down and go into a lot more detail for different body types and epigenetic types and all that sort of thing. But just keeping it simple for, for you to, at the moment, it's uh, that nice rhythm of things. Perfect. You still got my screen, Liz? Yeah, I've still got yeah. it, mate. But, uh, we were back to the number one. <laughs> all right, perfect. You got that there? Yeah, we're on the first screen though. We're on the first screen. So next one should be all about, while you're trying to fix that, Neil, um, I'll go on to the, um, you know, the total, the total rest one, if you can pull that one up, number six. Let's have a look. You should. Sorry, there guys. We should have it there now. There we go. Yeah, the there we go. So, okay. Sorry, go for it, Lisa. You got it. Yeah, this one's just all about having a little bit of me time. Now, this is not being selfish. I want you guys to understand that having time for yourself, if you're a mother and you've got kids and you think, oh, I just need to give, 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 
taking a little bit of time for yourself will give the kids more in the long run because you'll be less irritate, irritable, you'll be less short with the kids, you'll have more energy to actually uh, cope with the whole stuff. So taking this little bit of me time isn't weakness, it isn't being selfish, it's being sensible, just sensible. You need the time to he heal and repair and to have time out, and you need to just do things that will lower your stress levels. Now, I mean, this is a, uh, sound very simple, like going and having a bath, but like going and having a bath just before going to sleep, for example, changing your body temperature signals to your body that you are really getting ready for bed and actually helps you fall into a sleep. Meditation is a wonderful tool it doesn't actually have to be just a sitting meditation or a lying meditation some people can do like meditating like i really meditate in movement really well um, but it's giving you that time away from the problems of the world from the bloody computer from the the kids screaming at you just getting some time out and you know like i love reading books too and i have a, usually a pile of science books this big on, on my um table but actually just before i go to sleep i turn off all of the sciencey stuff and i actually go and read a stupid novel some crazy adventure novel because i actually don't want to be continuing the work mode at 11 at night i need a little bit of just some you know me time and i need that before i power down now sunshine is another very important aspect here Getting your sunshine means getting your, your vitamin D precursor. And your vitamin D is really, really essential for so many functions in the body. You wouldn't believe how many things that vitamin D is responsible for. Things like your calcium absorption, the strength of your, your, your muscles and your bones, uh, uh, your mood, of course. Everything is, is related, a lot of it is related to vitamin D. And that comes from uh, having some enough sunshine on your skin every day. So really, really important things. Anything to add there, Neil? No, nah, spot on. Again, keep it simple, guys. It's looking at low-hanging fruit, what some little things that you can add in, and, and just, just checking as the whole point of this, this discussion is, is, is checking in with you, yourself so that you know that if things are not feeling good, that you can add these things back in. And sometimes as simple as reading a book, like Lisa said, is enough to just allow your body to go, ah, oh, thank you. Thank you yep. very much. Okay. Right, nutrition. Now, the reason we've added this in, guys and girls, is this can put a big load on your body if it's the wrong stuff. And it really jumped out to me when I went into the supermarket yesterday to get some stuff for dinner, and I saw how much of the processed food had been emptied off the shelves. Now, what worries Lisa and I about that massively is if the processed food has been emptied off the shelves and it's not actually needed, then what a lot of people were worried about will be doing is then using that because it's in the cupboard. So all of a sudden, a good diet changes to a bad diet which then adds more load and um, pressure on the body and creates more inflammation. So simple way, just simple advice and very basic here, but the standard diet or the standard diet that we're, we're seeing with the amount of um, food that's been taken off the shelves is, is crap. So how much crap is in your diet? If it's more than 20% or two out of 10 foods, then we need to change that. So removing poor choices from your diet will reduce that additional stress on your body and, um, and start to take out the information which is gonna be better for your immunity. So don't fall into the trap of thinking, I'll stock up on a couple of extra bits of packet food or some white pasta, white bread and things like that and go, oh, because it's in the cupboards, I'm gonna use that instead of what I'd normally eat. So the crap, carbohydrates are white breads, are white flours, are white sugars, the white devils. Um, refined foods, uh, packet foods um, versus close to the source, e.g. apple versus apple juice. So, and then looking at what's in the food. So read your packets. How many items are listed on it? If there's a long list of items on the foods and there's, you've bought something for just in case numbers. you need it to it, if there's full of numbers, if don't there's a long list of stuff, don't put it in your body unless you really, really have to. All this stuff will just put more load on your body, which then in the, in, in the current world is gonna make a stressful situation feel even worse because your body's now full of stuff that it's not used to. So make, continue to make sensible choices around your, around your food. So making the change, if you're gonna wanna stock up with food and you're doing that, that's fine. Don't, there's no need, we've already been given the information, there's no need to you know, start hoarding stuff. But if you wanna get some extra stuff in, then make some choices that are healthier. Okay, um, one of our favorite books by Paul Check, How to Eat, Move and Be Healthy is a great resource and a great one to put on the list. And we'll take you through this information in a little bit or a lot more, a lot more detail. Okay, yeah. anything you want to add there, Luke? 
Yeah, this is very high level stuff. But, the, you know, when we're under stress, when we're facing the coronavirus, we want our immune system in tip top condition. Of course, that's, you know, our supplements and our vitamins and all that. But where are most of our vitamins going to be coming from and our minerals and so on is going to be coming from our food. So if we're eating too much processed food that is really or crappy food with bad fats and so on, that's really going to put a drain on our resources and our body needs everything it does. And if we do get the coronavirus, you need everything to be able to fight it. Or if you want to stop it actually getting in, the more your immune system is working, the better you're going to have, you know, a better chance you're going to have. Um, so we could go into all the details of, of the different types of people and what you need for all of that. Um, if anyone wants to find out about that, you can reach out to us. We have it on our epigenetic program, which looks at your genes and how you do it. But just as a general thing, keep away from those processed foods, cut the, the deep fried stuff that's crappy uh, vegetable oils and so on, and cut the sugar. You know, if you just do that eight times out of 10, you know, no one's perfect. Neil's not perfect, I'm not perfect. But it's all about what you do on the regular basis, not what you do on the be the, be the key. So remember, guys and girls, the food is designed to fuel your body. So after you eat, you should feel satisfied. You shouldn't be craving sugary, sugary foods. Food should restore our energy and improve our well-being and mental clarity. So if we're feeling sluggish, tired, jittery, or hyper, it's a strong sign that the food we're putting in is not agreeing with us. So listen to what your body's saying. The whole point of the wellness check when you think about your nutrition is, has it done the job it should for me? So these, again, are an easy win. If we're putting stuff in that's going to make us feel tired, jittery, or hyper, then replace it. Try something else and see how it makes you feel. Because often then that's going to cloud our judgment. It's going to cloud our thought process and make things feel, um, feel worse than they are. Yeah, and our decision-making process. You know, we, you know, they've proven that when you have um, crappy foods, you make worse decisions in life in general. So, you know, like it's a really good thing to stay away from. And one of the biggest culprits I see is all the sugary soft drinks that we you know what you see kids just pouring them down it's like oh my gosh you know like that is really the the easiest way to get into trouble really in, in a hurry so the next one we've got is a high you know hydration and water so not so much surfing in it as uh drinking it <laughs> surfing it's fun as well though there's probably a good point to add in lisa we'll talk about a little bit of the exercise but it's made me smile just thinking about that so yeah. do stuff you enjoy as well. A big important part of your health with the hydration is one thing, but getting out and still doing things uh, within, a reason. Way, within reason that you can do and you yeah. enjoy. And then working out ways that if you, if you can't do something that you really love, what's a, the what's a plan B? So they're still yeah. there and we still need to laugh and get those good hormones flowing through our system as well. Sorry, Lise, yeah. go for it. We'll go, we'll go into that on the exercise thing. You know, if you are stuck in isolation at the moment with a virus or if you're, you know, being on lockdown because you've got loved ones who need protecting, then there is lots of stuff that we can still do at home. and We'll get to that in a minute. But this is some recommendations for hydrating yourself and keeping yourself really in a good tip-top condition. Now, why is, why is water so important, Neil? Can you explain it? So it's basically the, you know, water is a big part of our, big part of our life. It keeps us, <laughs> it keeps, us, uh, keeps, us, keeps us moving, keeps us going. It's a clean agent for our body, so it's important to drink the right amount each day based on the weight. Simple guidelines there in front of you. So the simple way to work this out, for those of you who are listening and can't see the slides, is 0.033 um, times your kg in body weight. Okay, so that will give you a rough um, litres. So for 60 kgs, it'd be roughly two litres. 75, two and a half litres, 90 kg, three litres, 105, 3.5 kgs. Uh, sorry, 3.5 litres. So you should plan to increase that if you're exercising for about around 500 ml for every hour of exercise and then an additional glass for every tea or coffee you have. So yeah. most people are walking around dehydrated. Yeah. Okay. Most people are walking around dehydrated and we need to make sure that our hydration is good and that we've got what we, uh, what we need in our body. Again, use good quality water. Um, drink regularly throughout the day between meals to achieve the required amount. We shouldn't need to, too much more with meals if we're chewing properly and eating properly for a digestion and not rushing our food. Um, if you're peeing loads, which we see with a lot of our, our clients and athletes, is that they come back and go, I've upped my water to what you recommended and now I'm peeing loads. That's an indication that the, the water's mineral content is not high enough. So simple win for that is adding a pinch of good quality sea salt yeah, Himalayan um, salt, good one. India, Himalayan salt, pink salt, perfect into the um, into the water, and that will make a big um, big difference to how you hold on to the water as well. Yeah, so because got it's, lot, it's, sorry, 
yeah, sorry, it's, it's electrolytes versus water. You need that right combination. So if you're just having water and you're diluting your potassium, your magnesium, your, um, you know, all of your mineral content, then you're going to end up with an imbalance in your electrolytes and that can cause trouble. So you need to up both of them and keep them in balance. And this is what we see, you know, during, you know, as, a, as an ultra marathon runner, <laughs> this is always the biggest game that you're playing when you're running, you know, 100K, 200K races is, is getting that balance right. You get it wrong and, you know, I've gotten it wrong a few times and nearly kicked the bucket even um, from a potassium deficiency, for example, because you're just not holding on to the, the, the fluids like you should be or if you don't have enough sodium. So just being aware of that, if you are peeing loads and not – uh, replacing the, the mineral content, then yeah, you need to be aware of that. And if you have any specific medical conditions, then please obviously consult your doctor because that can. But this is for the general population, okay? And structuring your water will um, will help as well. So not just with salt, lemon will help. Using essential oils is good as well. Um, so structuring the water will allow the body to hold on to it that little bit more. Looking at exercise, then as we work our way down the wellness checks, so the right type of movement exercise is important. So we still need, we know that the, the, the evidence is there for exercise and immunity and exercise and resilience and mental strength makes a huge, huge difference. So, but what is important to understand that exercise is still a physical stressor. So if we've already got high stress levels, will exercise help? Yes, it will, as long as it's the right type of activity. So. so we want to encourage you to definitely be moving and exercising. But if your body some weeks or some days has got a high level of stress, which you'll know from your wellness check, then just change the type of activity you're doing. So we'll look at our working in versus our working out. A working in should create energy. So this is a type of session that you should create energy with. Get the mix of working and working out right. That's what we want to we do. So an example of working in session, you could perform it on a full stomach. So it's telling you already it's going to be lower intensity. It will involve um, some good breath control, no major spikes in heart rate or breathing. You'll be able to move with your breath. And you should find it relaxing as well and feel light at the end and more energized. Where I've battled over the years with this is feeling like it's not really a session. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. <laughs> I know you definitely have, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> I've battled you for years on this. <laughs> yeah, you've battled me many times. But once you get the, feel the benefits, then you'll realize that some days it's fine. If you're having to do a working in session every single day, then you know your body needs some real rest. But you should find that a few times a week, if you are switching an intense session from a working in session, your overall energy throughout the week, your well-being, your mindset will be a whole lot better because you've allowed your body a little bit more time to recover while still doing some movement. So, what, so the types of things that we're talking about here are, are things like Pilates or yoga or some just gentle stretching, some myofascial release, maybe some foam rolling. Um, keeping the body mobile and, and, and all your joints lubricated, but not you know, going for a high intensity interval training, that wouldn't count as a working in session. Even like meditation and deep breathing exercises is a part of this process. And the reason this is really important, and this is so counterintuitive, and it's why I argued with Neil for many a year, um, <laughs> it, 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 in my mind, a workout was where you were sweating your ass out and you were puffing your ass off, you know, like, a, and you were out of breath and you were gone half, you know, and then I was happy with myself. Um, and, and there is a time and a place for that, absolutely, you know, and we want to get stronger and fitter and all the rest of it and get all the brain-derived neurotrophic factor and all those other things that are really, really good, then high intensity is fantastic. However, you need to balance that with this working in, and the more stressed you are and the more trouble that you're having uh, with, your, with your body, the more you need to be leaning towards this way and not overdoing the other stuff because your hormones are involved here. And this is a very important one for ladies, so especially, you know, we've got some very complicated hormone sessions and, you know, later on we'll, we'll get into more complicated stuff like that. Um, but you don't want to be smashing your hormones every day. You, do, you want, want to be sending your cortisol through the roof because that's what you, you are doing that short term when you're doing the high intensity. Um, and you need to be controlling that if you're having a stressful life. You don't want to add more to the mix and end up with adrenal burnout, and cortisol problems and that sort of thing, which will lead to more inflammation and so on and so on, and then dec decreased in your immune system. So adding these, sessions are, stuff. these sessions are gold for reducing inflammation, total yeah. gold. And again, we'll send you some examples of those. We will post some 
some videos um, over the next week and some examples of a, a working in session because they are just, they, yeah. they really are game changers. We've got a few you on our, our YouTube channel already, actually, Neil. So we'll yeah, we'll share that. Some, yeah, we'll share those over. Yeah, we'll share those yeah, over. yeah, yeah. We've got a huge YouTube channel. Um, it's just under Lisa Tamari. If you go on YouTube, um, you'll find over 500 videos on everything like this from full, full documentaries right through to, yeah, working in and working out and all sorts, injury prevention and more. So looking at the working out, so we are designed to move. Um, we're not designed and equipped to sit in front of a computer in a yep. car or on the couch. Okay, we're really not. We're designed to hunt and gather, not to sit. So real simply speaking, when you're putting together, and this is what we're going to help you with over the coming weeks as well, if you can't use the gym, if you're having to train at home and exercise at home, then this is where we can help massively. The real simple way to look at it to start with is if you're doing some exercise that involves a squat, lunge, bend, push, pull, twist, and some sort of walking or running, then you're covering a lot of the primal movement patterns that we used to use when we were, when we were hunter-gatherers. Now, if you're covering those as well and you're moving through different ranges of movement, you'll be moving in a three-dimensional movement. You'll be moving through all planes of motion, which means your body is going to get a good workout it's going to get a good um, a good amount of exercise, and also you're going to be looking after your um, your every, every part of the body as you do that. So you're not just moving in one plane. Does that make sense, Lise? Absolutely. Like working, having worked with my mum, people might know my story. Um, mum had an aneurysm, and I've just released a book called Relentless about her journey back. But one of the things, like because she was a uh, basically bedridden for for almost two years, you know, mostly. Um, she's lost all the ability to do all these various things and getting them back, I tell you, is a hard, hard, you know, I was trying to teach her the other day to do the twist, you know, the twist, the dance moves, yeah. hit the music going on. She couldn't, she didn't know how the body, the, the hips go one way, the, the, the upper body goes the other way. Um, so I had to teach her all of these things again. These, but we, on the other hand, my dad, who's 81 and doesn't have the healthiest lifestyle and try arguing with him, but anyway, but he does have a healthy lifestyle. Where you go from, Lee. Yeah, he's a hard, he's a hardcore. Um, but he does have a healthy lifestyle in that he's gardening all day, pretty much every day. So he's bending, squatting, pulling, lifting heavy loads. He's in funny, awkward positions, and that makes him extremely mobile and extremely strong for an 81-year-old. So even though he doesn't go to the gym and he doesn't do any of those athlete things, he is working his body in all those planes, and that's what keeps him strong at 81. And that's a, um, yeah, that's a perfect example. And he's looking bloody good as well. He's looking yeah, he's, great. He's a bit of a legend. He is. So energy, it's on the wellness check as well. It's there for a reason. One of my continuous goals on a daily basis is to get out of bed like a kid on Christmas Day. <laughs> now, you'll all know what that feeling feels like, that excitement, that, that just that high energy, that, oh, I can't wait to get up. That's what we should be like. And I'd encourage all of you to strive for, strive for that as well. For a lot, of, a lot of us, even if we get half of that, we're, we're going to be feeling a whole yeah, lot better than we, um, than we currently are. So check each day how much energy you've got, how should you feel, where's your expectation, where do you want to be feeling? Because you, with all the things we've been talking about on today's um, session, you can change that and, and, yeah. and put, put some expectations around yourself that it doesn't have to be the norm, that that's how you feel when you get up in the morning. It really, really doesn't. Set a standard and work to it and then I know that if I lose a bit of sleep, that I'm not going to feel like a kid on Christmas morning. However, if I do focus on my sleep, focus on all the things we've been talking about, good food, good exercise, um, the hydration, then I'm a lot closer to running out of bed to unwrap the presents. And that's what it should be like every day. So keep the energy tanks full and don't feel one of the best bits of advice I was given um, by, um, it's actually by a client I was working with. So I was talking to him about these things and he said, do you know what makes sense to me, Neil, is that, this the building up your energy stores should be like a bank account so don't feel you've got to spend it all at once what a lot of us do and go we just go well i feel great today i'm going to go and use all this energy up it's all right to save a bit so that we're keeping to increasing our savings up and then we add a bit more energy in we use a bit but we're always always got a surplus there so think of it like that rather than emptying the empty the account all at once and, and the way we think and the positivity, and we'll be going into this in the, in the near future with our, with our content mm -hmm. that we're producing, is very much around mindset and the way you approach big challenges. We are all facing you know, an unprecedented time. We've all got huge challenges to deal with, both financially from a business perspective, from a health perspective of our loved ones. We're, we're, we're feeling a lot of fear and um, you know, none of us are immune to that. But it's how we then deal, and this is why this sort of information is super, super crucial, because if you're doing all the physical stuff, then you'll be able to cope with the mental stuff a hell of a lot better. 
if you're going out and you're drinking a lot of alcohol because you're depressed and if you're not exercising and you're just you're getting up on each other's nerves because you're trapped in the house together and all of those sort of things and you haven't done the exercise and you're not getting the right stimulus at the right times then that's going to exacerbate this whole process that we're all being forced into so try and change the direction you know uh, of the way your thoughts are going try and look for the positive things from this experience that we're going it's going to make us reflect on who we are the direction we're going and there will be good things that come out of this what we do have to do right now is to protect the vulnerable in our society and that means our elderly our immune com compromised people who have had you know cancers or transplants or uh, have for some reason got an immune system problem they are the ones that we are doing this for we are not just staying home and protecting you know like ourselves we are doing that to protect the people on the front lines because the more we stay home, the more we're gonna be protecting them and also our, our vulnerable, our elderly and so on. Those are the ones that we are staying home for. So if we can look after ourselves and make this as a, a time of reflection and a time to change a direction and to make this a more caring society at the end of the day, then something good will come out of it. And I'm really big on always finding the silver lining in every damn cloud that's come. You know, like. I've just released a book called Relentless and it's about the story of bringing my mum back after her aneurysm. And we were left in a state where she was like hardly any higher function. And it was, I couldn't find anything in the silver lining for starters, but after working with her for four years, after bringing her back, after the discoveries that I made along the way, and now having written this book and helping hundreds of other people on their journeys, there was the silver lining. You don't always see it on day one. Okay, we're on day one right now, but there will be some silver lining things. There will be some benefits that we'll get out of this. But what we have to do right now is consolidate as a society and to protect our vulnerable. That is that is the absolute key. So stay safe. I think that's all we've got for the day. Um, we're going to be producing much more content. Please. Um, Subscribe to our podcast. We have a podcast called Pushing the Limits and I put out uh, content every week on there. We'll be sharing some of these episodes on there and we've also um, got you know, our YouTube channel where you can reach out to us on Facebook. We're pretty easy to find, Lisa Tamaji or Neil Wagstaff. Um, Neil, anything you want to add to before we wrap up for today? One thing, just uh, an easy win, um, just to really kick in your... Cause the other, one of the other things we've got on the... On the list is just around stress. So really spending some time activating your parasympathetic nervous system. Oh, yes. One of the, the easy ways to do that is to, um, is to just focus on a simple box breathing technique. And one of our favorites, which we'll leave you with, is, is um, just simply doing a simple count of four where you breathe in for a count of four. You're going to hold for a count of four. Slowly breathe out for a count of four. Then you're holding again before you breathe in. So you're literally going through count of four and a breath in, a hold, a oh. breath out, a hold. Try and do that through the nose. Be much better for your parasympathetic system as well. Once you get comfortable with it, you can then look at it increasing that up to five seconds, six seconds. Go with where you're comfortable. But bringing that in is a simple way just to flip yourself into your parasympathetic system each day, which will take more stress and load off your body. A lot of us will be very sympathetic at the moment, so high heart rates, high sweat rates, high breathing rates, and we need to just spend some time bringing that, bringing that back, back down. It stops the, the cortisol and the adrenaline production, and I can, you know, because I do this many, many times a day, throughout the day, as soon as I can, you know, and I'm a very adrenaline dominant person, I know from my epigenetic type that I am, so I have to like stop every every half an hour or a couple of hours, especially when I'm doing a lot, and sit there and just do three breaths in that box pattern and immediately I can feel the cortisol drop. It really has a benefit. So just keep practicing that and use that to your advantage to lower those stress levels so your immune system stays on fire. Because when those cortisol and adrenaline are high, what happens? It takes energy from your immune system and right now we need that. So just simple breathing. Right guys and girls, thanks Lise. It was great as always talking to you. And the other thing I said was there was nothing else, but I'm, I'm gonna, I've got one more thing. Is it's great, <laughs> it's great to talk. Just even connecting with you today, that social connection, it, it really is nice to spend some time talking with your, with your yeah. mates. And even yeah. having this conversation today, I, I can feel through my body now. I've smiled a bit more, I've laughed a bit more. That's, that's good. So make sure whether that's done in person, via FaceTime, via Messenger, however it's done, 
just keep it there because the social aspect as well is so important for our health. Social distancing does not mean social disconnection. Well said, mate. Well said. <laughs> All right, mate. We'll talk soon.